Okay, so now we're, we're moving on to bivariate date distributions. So that means we're talking about two variables, as opposed to the past we've only had one to deal with. And so here's an example where we have x represents the number of weekly credit card purchases a person makes, and y is the number of credit cards the person owns. Suppose this is what the table looks like. So there's lots of different combinations. So I could have, I could make two purchases a week and have two credit cards, and that would be probably a 0.222. But if I sum up these totals here, if I look at these, all these values, I add them up. So the probability of having one credit card is 0 0.03 when I add 0 0.1, 0 0.1 plus those two. The probability of having two credit cards, if I add those up, is 0.4. And if I add this column up, I get 0 0.3, probably having three credit cards. Similarly, if I add up all my x's, I end up with 0 0.2, 0 0.19, 0 0.36, and a 0 0.25. Those are what the columns add up to. So. 0.25. And so now if I look at these probability questions, find the probability that a person makes two or more credit card purchases in a week. So that's talking about credit card purchases, which is x. x credit card purchases, I want it to be bigger than or equal to 2. Well, that is simply going to be more than or equal to 2 will be these two values here. That's the probability that x is 2 plus the probability that x is 3. If I add up 36 plus 25, I end up with 0 0.61. B part says find the probability that you have two or three credit cards given you've only made one purchase in a week with a credit card. Well, that's find the probability that I have two or three credit cards, y equals 2 or y equals three credit cards, given that I've made x is one purchase. Well, I'm only looking at this column here. The total is, my total is going to be one nine. Well, the probability of two or three credit cards is this probability here, which is 0 0.09. And that works out to 0 0.474. C part says the expected number of purchases in a week. Well, the purchase in a week is talking about x. And so it's just asking for the expected value of x. And it's really as with this, because we're only doing a single variable here. So it's 0 times 0 0.2, 1 times 19. So 0 times 0 0.2 plus 1 times 19% plus 2 times 0.36 plus 3 times 0.25. And when I do that, I get 1.66 purchases in a week is my expected number. And then finally, I'm asked to do the expected number of credit cards times number of purchases. Well, if I'm going to do that, that is going to be a lot of different criteria here. So if I'm going to do the of x, well, not probability, but the expected value of x times y. Well, what that's going to be is I'm going to look for every single possibility. I'm going to have to look at. I'm going to have to look at the look at this cell. Well, I take the two possibilities. So it's zero times one times. 0 0.8, that's for the cell, because 0 and 1. Plus 0 and 2, 0 times 2 times 0 0.8, and then 0 times 3 for this cell here, times 0 0.4. Plus, moving on to this column, it's going to be 1 times 1, 1 times 1 times 0 0.1, plus 1 times 2 times 0 0.05, 0.05, careful with the decimals, 0 0.05, plus 1 times 3, times 0 0.04, and so on. I'm going to pause it, and you'll see the rest. And finally, this last column will be 3 
times 3 times 18. 3 times 3 times 18 percent. I crunch that all out and I end up a 3.62. And so this kind of works like a two-way table with probabilities with different outcomes for our different random variables. Um, and we can do expectations with this as well.